Hi everybody. Okay, so let's um, let's look at some problems from uh, about injective, bijective, and surjective functions from section two of chapter twelve, um, and see uh, see what we can learn from those. So um, the first one is uh, actually some of these are are examples from the text rather than problems. So this is an example from the text, um, and it asks you to show that the function from r with 0 removed to r, which is given by the formula f of x equals 1 over x plus 1, is injective but not surjective. And you can see the reason that the domain has to be r minus 0, because the formula is not defined uh, if x is 0. So in the Cartesian product ordered pair formulation, f is the collection of, function, uh, of points x 1 over x plus 1, where x is in r minus 0, and y is in r. So the first thing we want to know is we want to show that f is injective. Now, the I think almost always the easy... The easiest way to um, prove that a function is injective is to use the formulation of the definition, which says that um, f is injective, also called one to one, if for all a and a prime in the domain, if f of a equals f of a prime, then a equals a prime. This is the contrapositive of the original definition, which says that f is injective if whenever a is not equal to a prime, f of a is not equal to f of a prime. But to apply this, uh, this definition in this situation, what we do is we imagine that we have f of a equals f of a prime. So let's suppose that f that's the we're going to test this if f of a equals f of a prime then a equals a prime. So suppose f of a equals f of a prime. Well that means that 1 over a plus 1 equals 1 over a prime plus 1. And if we just do a little quick algebra then we get that 1 over a equals 1 over a prime and a equals a prime. And that's exactly what the conclusion was supposed to be. So f is injective. Notice that we didn't have to worry about a being 0 because it's excluded from the domain. Now, what about surjectivity? Well, let's recall that a function is surjective if for all b in the codomain, there is an a in the domain, which is also equal to r in this r minus 0, so that f of b equals a. So in other words, can we always solve the equation, sorry, f of a equals b. Can we always solve the equation 1 over a plus 1 equals b, no matter what b is. And if we try to do that, we see that 1 over a has to equal b minus 1, or a would have to equal 1 over b minus 1. And so we see that this is only valid if b is not equal to 1. If b is equal to 1, then 1 over a plus 1 is never equal to 1. Be because 1 over a here is never equal to 0, right? It it's 1 over a number. And so we've proved that f is not surjective by finding a counterexample to the assertion that for all b in the codomain, 
there exists a function, there exists a point in the domain for which f of a equals b, and our counterexample is b equals 1. So b equals 1 is not in the range of f. So we've shown that the function is injective, but not surjective. Now the second problem just makes a little tiny twist on this by removing the bad point 1 from the codomain. And now um, the problem that we had before goes away. So the injectivity proof is still the same because if 1 over a plus 1 equals, so this is the same function, f of a is 1 over a plus 1. 1 over a plus 1 equals 1 over a prime plus 1. We can easily deduce from that that a equals a prime, so f is injective. And for surjectivity, if b is in the codomain, we can solve f of a, which is 1 over a plus 1, equal to b, and get a is 1 over b minus 1, which is valid since we know that b is not equal to 1, since 1 is not in the codomain of f. We deleted the problem point. So there's two simple examples which use um, just kind of functions of, in the old sense of functions, functions of rules, functions with algebra, to see what was going on. Here's one that might be a little bit trickier. Here we have a function of pairs of integers. It's, it's a problem of two equations and two unknowns, but the va variables are integers. So we have g of mn is m plus n, m plus 2n. And we want to know, is it surjective and injective? So let's test injectivity first. So the pattern of an injectivity proof is we suppose that g of mn equals g of m prime n prime. So what does that mean? It means that m plus n, m plus 2n, is equal to m prime plus n prime, m prime plus 2n prime. And that's basically a system of two equations and two unknowns. We have m plus n equals m prime plus n prime, m plus 2n equals m prime plus 2n prime. And let's subtract the lower equation from the upper equation. The m's and the m primes cancel on both sides of this equation, and we get 2n minus n on the left-hand side, and 2n prime minus n prime on the right-hand side, so we see that n equals n prime. But if n equals n prime, we have m plus n equals m prime plus n prime, which is equal to m prime plus n. And subtracting n from both sides, we see that m equals m prime. So we've shown that m n is the same as m prime n prime. And therefore, G is injective. What about surjectivity? Surjectivity might be a little bit trickier. So surjectivity says that given, let's call them A, B in Z cross Z, there are M and N in z cross z, so that g of mn 
equals AB. In other words, we have to have that M plus N equals A and M plus 2N equals B. And we have to find M and N. But we can use the same kind of two equations and two unknown stuff that we did before. We can subtract the second equation from the first, the M's cancel, and we get N equals B minus A. And then if we have M plus B minus A equals A, we get M equals 2A minus B. And so we have found a pair, 2A minus B, B minus A, with the property that G of that is equal to AB. And therefore, G is surjective. And if you are both surjective and injective, then you're bijective. The last problem is a little trickier, and it's kind of a counting problem more than it is a functions problem, but, but let's think about it a little bit. It has a typo in it. Get rid of that dollar sign. So we want to give a function. These two sets each have seven elements, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. These are each seven element sets. And we want to construct a function f from a to b. And the question is, in how many different ways can we do this? So here we have to think about it. And it, actually, we get to use some of our ideas from our section on counting. Because how do we make a function? Let me write down the domain. So to make a function that starts on this, here's the domain, we have to say, what is the value of the function for each of these seven points? In, and now we are, so in other words, we, we are allowed to put any number from the codomain into each of these slots, and we will get a function because the thing that could trip us up is if we managed, if we gave two different values to A, but we're not going to allow that. We're just going to pick one value here, one value here, one value here, and so forth. So we have for each of the seven choices of the seven elements of the domain, we have seven choices from the codomain. And this is a classic example of what we call the multiplication principle. So the total number of possibilities is going to be 7 times 7 times 7 times 7, or 7 to the seventh possible functions. I haven't worked out what 7 to the seventh is, but um, that's the number. So this is the total number of functions. But now things get a little bit more interesting. How many of these functions are injective? So here we're just counting all functions. Now let's try to count injective functions. So again, we have the elements of the domain. And again, we have choices for what we're going to put as the value. But if it's injective, what that means is, let's say we put a 1, just for the sake of argument, in position A. Well, we can never use 1 again, right? Because the requirement that it be injective is that if, if you have an element in the domain which is different, it has to have a different value. So that means we can put um, any values that we want in each slot, but we can only use each value from the codomain once. So we can 
pick. One way to think about it is we can pick, I mean, again, it's the multiplication principle. We have seven choices for f of a, but then we only have six choices for f of b because we've already used up one of them and we can't reuse it, and five choices for f of c, and all the way down to one choice for f of g. It's important here that the sets have the same number of elements, that there's seven elements on both sides. So the possible number of injective functions here is seven factorial. Another way to think about this in terms of permutations, remember seven factorial counts the number of ways we can rearrange the numbers from one up to seven in any order, is that the way you make a function here is you rearrange the numbers from one to seven, and then you write down that rearrangement in this column. And because you've just rearranged it, every number is only going to get used once, and you're going to get an injective function. So we have 7 to the 7th total functions, 7 fa factorial injective functions. What about surjective functions? Let's use another color for surjective functions. How about green? So to make a surjective function, well, we, we have to think about this a little bit differently. Surjective means that if we pick an element from the codomain, like 1, one of these things has to hit 1. Okay, And then if we pick another element from the codomain, like 2, one of them has to pick 2. So what if we try to argue in reverse? Namely, we write down the codomain and suppose I say, okay, which one? Somebody has to hit one. So suppose it's C. And somebody has to hit two. So suppose it's B. And somebody has to hit 3, so suppose it's A. Somebody has to hit 4, so suppose it's D. 5 it could be that. Somebody has to hit 7, so it's F. Somebody has to hit 6, so it's G. Notice that because there are seven elements in the codomain, and there has to be at least one element in the domain which gets mapped onto it, there can really only be one. Of e in other words, the number of elements which could map to 1 from the domain, there can't be 2. Because if two elements map to 1, then I've only got 5 elements left on the left-hand side, but 6 elements left on the right-hand side, so I can't hit everything. So um, every... Every element in the codomain has to be paired or matched with at least one element from the domain. But both sets have seven elements. So each element in the codomain is matched with only one element in the domain. And what that means is that once again you have um, what you've got is you have to choose for the uh, each element in the codomain you have for the first element of the codomain you have seven choices for what maps to it. For the second element of the codomain you have six elements of, to which maps to it and so on. 
And so once again, you have seven factorial possibilities. Now notice that the number of injective functions and the number of surjective functions is the same. They're both seven factorial. The last question is how many of these functions are bijective? Well, to be bijective, you have to be both surjective and injective. So you could have a situation where you have, so let's look at bijective. What's a nice color for bijective? Dark blue or a sort of purpley. On the one hand, you have the injective functions. And on the other hand, you have the surjective functions. And inside here, you have the bijective functions. So one thing you know is that there are fewer bijective functions, or, or um, there's at most seven factorial bijective functions. How do you make, how do you count the bijective functions? Well, to count the bijective functions, you can take, for example, the injective functions and ask how many of them are surjective. So we have seven factorial bijective functions, uh, in, sorry, injective functions. And in those seven factorial injective functions, what's going on? Each element of the domain maps to a different element of the codomain. Otherwise, it wouldn't be injective. But there are seven elements of the codomain. Each of them maps to a different element of the, sorry, seven elements of the domain. Each of them maps to a different element of the codomain, which means each of them can only, each of the elements of the codomain can only be hit by one of the elements of the domain. Because let's argue by contradiction. If, if there was an element of the codomain that was missed, that wasn't in the, if this, so if this supposedly injective function were not surjective, that would mean one of them was missed. Let's say this one. Say this one was missed by the elements coming from the domain. Well, then you would have seven elements on the left and only six elements on the right, which would mean that at least something on the right would have to have two lines coming to it. But then it wouldn't be injective. So what that means is that each of these uh, things on the right has to get hit. And so every injective function is, in fact, surjective in this case. And so we have seven factorial bijective functions. If this argument seems fishy to you, we will revisit it because what we're really using here is the, what's called the pigeonhole principle. We're really using the fact that if you have a set with seven elements and a set with six elements, and you map this, you draw lines from the set with seven elements to the set with six elements, at least one element in the set with six elements has to get hit by two lines. It's called the pigeonhole principle because there are those like desks that have little pigeonholes in them, and let, or like mailboxes. Let's say you have six mailboxes and you have seven letters, and you're going to put the letters in the mailboxes. If you have seven letters and six mailboxes, one of the mailboxes has to get at least two letters in it. If you think about it in our context here, these are the letters and these are the mailboxes. If you miss a mailbox, let's say you miss this mailbox, then you've got seven letters and six mailboxes. So at least one of the mailboxes gets two letters. That would mean that at least one of the mailboxes has two lines going to it. And that would mean that the function is not one-to-one. -one. So by contradiction, because the function is one-to-one, Every mailbox gets exactly one letter, 
And so if the function is injective, then it's surjective. Lot to think about there.